You gotta take control. Life's too short. Get out of your head. Make a better life instead. You gotta give it all your best. So put your hands up to the sky and live your best life. All right. Don't just let it go by. Just try. Oh my. Got only one life. Got only this time. We gonna get it right. You gotta let go of those who don't belong in your tribe. So cut the bad out of your life. What's going on? It's Jedi Joey. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I thought it's finally time we rank all live action Star Wars shows from the worst to the best. Currently, there are six live action Star Wars shows. There will be seven coming in December when Skeleton Crew come out. We'll do this ranking again once Skeleton Crew comes out, depending on if it's the worst Star Wars show, which is not possible, or the um, or just a mediocre okay show. Or it could be great, it could be amazing, and we just don't know. I mean, it looks like Goonies and Stranger Things, so we'll have to see what they, what happens. But coming in at number six, look, I I'm not going to ramble on this too too much, because we all know my thoughts on this, but let's get into it. All right, coming in at number six, it's the cancer stick, the the horrible, the most terrible Star Wars product, not even show, the most terrible Star Wars product, product ever made. You guys want to know something crazy? I would rather watch the sequel trilogy of Star Wars than watch this garbage again. They may have ruined Luke Skywalker, but at least we got to see Luke Skywalker, and at least there was decent... There wasn't good writing, but there was better writing than this cesspool of garbage. Now, what I will say is, I will be fair. The Acolyte first three episodes, well, they have a boring tone. The mystery aspect, the almost um, murder on the Orient Express like the books... In Star Wars, that vibe, the mystery kind of got me hooked. If it wasn't for freaking TikTok and spoiling the freaking reveal of the Sith in episode one, everyone's like, oh, who's the Sith? I know who it is, because TikTok spoiled it, bro. It's like, this is the way us content creators have. We don't get to have good surprises once it leaks on social media, because people just constantly post it everywhere. But, so speaking of, so let's do the positives first. So it's at number six because of some serious negatives. But let's do pro, let's do pros first. Pro, I liked the action choreography. I thought the choreography of this one was decent. We did have when it happened. This had the best lightsaber choreography we have had since the prequel trilogy. Look, I like episode five of the Acolyte, but don't get it twisted. <laughs> I am in no way saying the Acolyte has better lightsabers than the prequel, like some of these other morons will tell you. It has fights on the level of I enjoyed them. Did I enjoy them as much? No, but they're better than what we got in the sequels considering one of the sequels movies we didn't get any and then in 9 they sucked balls. So, either way you know what? They sucked Death Star balls. So, so, so we had to do that because the Star Wars thing, right? But, so but, so pros the villain. I think Leslie Hedlund can go screw herself in the corner. Um, Amanda Stimberg, I have no desire to see her return um, playing either of these characters. I guess I wouldn't mind seeing May again if she was executed, but after her little stunt, she said we we're going to talk about that in the next video. Uh, I think I've kind of just come around that Osha and May are dead to me. They're, they're, they're tied as being the worst Star Wars characters that we've had, which we're going to get into when we talk about our other bad shows. But, final verdict... I love the villain. I would love to see it. I think it's stupid that they canceled this show on this the villain's birthday. I think the villain deserved more credibility. And I think that it would be nice if that happened. Overall, I'm going to say that pros, yeah, like the choreography, the villain, soul until they fucked him up, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Um, so pros, so far, only really liked episode 5. Episode 3. Okay, let's get into the bad. Okay, you heard the good. Now the bad. I only liked one episode 4 out, which was episode 5. But the chore to get into episode 5 was horrible, because I liked the first episode. I was really enjoying the mystery, despite it being spoiled. I was intrigued by more action scenes, the fight scene, the kung fu sequence. I didn't like they killed Trinity and then just brought her back in flashbacks. Um, they, they wasted her in this show. Um, the fight scene between um, Soul and her was really... Soul and May in episode 2 is really cool. I, I did like when they were really set in the double, double part. But 
It's not enough to save this show. And that being said, this show is a... It is not a Star Wars show. It is an agenda... Um, a coat hanger abortion of agenda and horribleness in the worst way possible. It is so focused on agenda, it will force female characters down your throat. Just for the second, like, I'm reminding you, hey, look, guys, we got female characters on this show. We, 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 right, right, look, look, there's a female, there's a female, oh, and there's uh, Daphne Keene, uh, who's gonna be, uh, X-23 again in Deadpool and Wolverine. Yeah, she's cool, right? And then she died. Um, what do you say? Lightsaber stuff was good. There are some stuff that in Star Wars, Disney does not understand how lightsabers work, okay? Bro, as cool as it is, and, and as much as a Krav Maga fan, I, 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 I'm just gonna say it. You can't headbutt a lightsaber. And can we talk about the fact that it's been, we've had Star Wars, our technology has evolved, and why has no one known, why has no one in choreography found the single-handedly most practical, coolest way to kill someone with a lightsaber? When you're simply just turning it on and off. Like, bro, you're the fucking force. How cool would it be if someone's just like, picking up the villain lightsaber, and the Sith is just, like, the Jedi's like, oh, this is a cool saber. And then the bro puts it up to his eye, the bro just, oh, oh shit, now my eye's like, like on fire, like, oh, there's plasma in my eye. I'm a, I'm a dumbass, why the fuck did I put that in, in, in into my eye? Like, it, cool shit like that would've been awesome. Like, just ignite the fucking saber. Like, that shit would be awesome. But overall, the Acolyte sucks balls, okay? The writing, it is clown writing. There was going to be Pennywise and Joker clips in, in, in this part. Now look, Acolyte fans, normally I would say, I don't want no beef. And then Jared Bell's going to come in, you don't want no beef? You don't want no beef? Well, I'll be real. I do want fucking beef with you guys. Because I, we're, when we talk about this in the next video, this is if you think this is a good Star Wars show, you're delusional. And you're not a Star Wars fan. If you, if you like this show, you should have your man card taken away from you. You should have your, you you should have your Star Wars fandom badge removed. You want to go buy toys and be a fan of the Acolyte? Enjoy the Acolyte as its own thing. Do not dare slander us with that the Acolyte is Star Wars. Because you know what Star Wars is? The original trilogy, the prequel trilogy, Clone Wars, The Mandalorian. That's Star Wars. Not the sequels, not this BS. That is Star Wars. And in the books. What George Lucas intended. And so yeah, so what am I gonna score Acolyte? I'm scoring it one for episode five, I'm gonna give it a one out of ten lightsabers. Because I can't give it a zero, because there was one episode I did enjoy the fights in. And I do like the character. So it is the worst, hands down, not only the worst episode of Star Wars, but not only is it one of the worst Star Wars shows of all time is one of the worst shows of all time. So therefore, the writing is makes CW shows Oscar worthy. Like, when, when, when we watch Arrow and Flash, we you know the worst episode of The Flash? I'm like, bro, I watch, I watch episode three of The, of the Acolyte? That makes Kamala, that makes Miss Marvel episode, episode two look like the God sends. Then that saying something, because I hate, <laughs> I hate uh, Miss Marvel episode two. But anyway, guys, these are my thoughts on the, on the Acolyte as number six. What do you guys think about number six? Would you put Acolyte at number six? Or would, you, would you say that's a good place for it? Do you think it's the worst Star Wars live action show? Let me know. Do you guys think that for you it's the best live action Star Wars show? Let's disagree about it in the comments. I want to hear your thoughts. Um, or tell me why you think it's the best. And if you could take one thing from the Acolyte that you would like them to see move forward and not renew the Acolyte, but use another character, who would you use and why? Because I just think they did so many things wrong. The fact, we don't need season two because they're going to bring in Yoda, and they're bringing in Plagueis, and they're going to ruin him, they're going to ruin Palpatine. What we need, bro, is a Palpatine show. Not made by Leslie Hedwin, made by someone that knows fucking Star Wars, and make it with Plagueis and Palpatine. Can we just, look, Tales of the, Tales, Tales of the Empire was a letdown, but Tales of the Sith, bro. Okay. All live-action Star Wars shows be damned. Just give me fucking Tales of the Sith and give me, give me, um, Vader training Star Killer. Give me, 
Uh, Plague is training Palpatine, like young, honestly, young little boy Palpatine, like being trained straight up by Plagueis. Like that shit would go hard. Like, like Deadpool says, let this man cook. Like Balon and Shin first training, like good Sith stories. I want to see. But overall, like I said, that quite sucks. So that's at number six. Let's move on to number five. Number five on the list. Now this hurts my soul. Okay, this is the show. This is the Star Wars show that I had the most hype for. The Mandalorian was so amazing, especially the first two seasons when they set up Boba Fett. And this, and this second, this show soiled, soiled it, soiled it. They soiled everything here. We have the fucking Power Rangers wannabe little race car gang. Boba Fett is supposed to be like basically the Penguin show. This is the Penguin show, but in Star Wars. You know, it's a mob show. But the problem is, they did it fucking horrible because they made Boba Fett a respectful leader. No, he doesn't just show up there like, bitch, where's my gift? Like, I, I, I'm the damn you of, the, of Tatooine. I need him fucking capping people and fucking threatening them. Like, he'll be like, you're like coming to him, like, asking, what, what will you give us as a present? Like, he's like, oh, I'm giving you this gift. Oh, I'll take care of this problem for you. No, bitch, you work for him. You come to him and he says, you jump how high, right? You live on his fucking planet. You no, that that they made Boba Fett lame. Like, and and we he's barely in the suit in the episode. He wasn't Tamron Morrison wasn't training. Even Tamron Morrison himself didn't like the writing in in this. And and that's just sad, bro. It's it, it's sad. This is a clown show. Like, it took the Mandalorian coming in for two episodes to steal the show just to have those two episodes would be good, but it felt like Mandalorian Part 2, not Book of Boba. The only cool thing about this show is at least Filoni gave us Cad Bane in live action, and I hope to God we see him return in live action, because that shit was awesome. Also, Cobb Vanth and Cad Bane standoff was pretty cool. So, overall, I'm gonna give Book of Boba bad writing, I'm, I'm gonna give it a 2 out of 10. I like it more than The Acolyte, but it's not as strong as some of the other shows. It is just as straight up sucks. Now, let's move on to the most controversial one on this list. Coming in at number four. Now, this show should be the number one show when you hear about who's in this show. You had Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen come back for a show titled Post Revenge of the Sith with even Revenge of the Sith music to hype up the fans. And we were going to get an Obi-Wan continuation where Obi-Wan and Vader were going to fight. This show... Oh, first of all, did we mention the Acolyte that the Acolyte had an $80 million um, budget in the film? That budget should have been an Obi-Wan. So first of all, let's get the verse out of the way. I enjoyed the actor for young Leia, but she did not need to be in the fucking show. We should not have had Obi-Wan and young Leia on adventures. Obi-Wan is not supposed to know who those kids are. He's only supposed to know Luke because he's protecting him. It was great to see Qui-Gon. They ruined Vader in this show. They made him a pussy-ass bitch to elevate Reva, even though he did get a cool fight. Reba, I'm sorry, bro. You know, Disney, fuck you, okay? Th this is bullshit. You, you literally have turned the idea of one of the coolest, most coldest, baddest things that Vader do. It's like, oh, you know all those younglings that Vader just killed in uh, uh, off screen? Bro, they're all alive. They're all just like, when they were hyping up this show, I wanted to see Anakin in his prime mowing down children and, and Grand Jedi Masters and... You're just like, no, they're all alive, and he became an Inquisitor. And then, the, first of all, Dave Filoni, I don't know how you signed off for this, I don't know if it's because of Kathleen Shitty or what, but how the fuck do you let the Grand Inquisitor get killed and then come back in the end and still let Reva take his fucking job? No, bro, that's 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 bullshit. Reva's the worst character in the history of Star Wars. She's annoying. They did nothing with the fucking Inquisitors. They made them lame. The lights and the choreography is ass. It was cool to watch Vader burn everyone. But you never should have had Vader and Obi Wan meet. Just fucking bring Maul and do Crimson Dawn. You don't need to see the Empire. Fuck it. Crimson Dawn, bro. Just Maul. Maul and Kira versus Obi Wan. That's the shit people want to see. That's what I want to see. That's what you should have done. So I gotta give the Obi Wan show lame ass writing, horrible stuff. The fact they ruined the continuity when the stupid thing that sucks is one of the greatest lines on the shirt I have on New Hope is. When Vader and, and Obi-Wan fight for the first time after Revenge of the Sith and New Hope, the line is, When I met you, I was but the learner. 
Now I am the master. Bro, they ruined that shit now. Because he shows up and they fight, and Obi-Wan kicks Vader's ass by going fucking space Jesus. I'm like, no. No, bro. It's not. That's not how it's supposed to be. And also, stop exaggerating how the Force works. Like Han Solo says, that's not how the Force works. Instead of giving us cool lightsaber choreography, like, I'd rather have lightsabers in hand-to-hand -hand combat than a bunch of cool Force moves that just make no sense. Like, throwing rocks at Vader? How are rocks supposed to hurt Vader's suit? That armor's not, like, airtight, like... So yeah, I'm gonna give the Obi-Wan show a 3 out of 10. It's still very bad. It's the third worst Star Wars show. But it had potential, and it squandered it. Now, coming in at the only three good live-action Star Wars shows. Coming in at number three, we have Andor. Okay, now some people are like, well, why isn't Andor number one? Let, let's get into this, alright? Andor, here's the problem with Andor. Andor has slow pacing, not a lot of action... Doesn't feel like a Star Wars show. It feels more Jason Bourne and stuff. But they should have went more for the John Wick approach. And real, hopefully, season two does a lot more of like the darker. So I like how they made this really shady character like Andor. Like Rogue One's great, and this should be even better. It sounds like season two is gonna be more promising. So they have more characters from Rogue One. But I don't like how this this show ruined the Empire. I like the prison uh, episode um, with Andy Serkis. One Way Out is one of the best written Star Wars episodes ever. I love how they pulled that off. I thought that was great. Other than that, eh, mediocre. It was kind of cool to see um, intimate relations in Star Wars. Never thought we would see that, so the, the, so that's kind of cool. Um, I don't really uh, like how Andor is pining over this one girl and then on his quest for his sister, and all of a sudden that's not important. Loved seeing uh, Alexander Skarsgård, or Stout Skarsgård, and I can't wait to see what they do with him in Season 2. The fight scenes in the first episode were pretty good. Um, I wish there would have been more. I don't like that some of the weapons looked like Call of Duty weapons instead of like Star Wars weapons. And I don't like how the Empire was treated. But overall, I'm going to give Andor a 7.5 out of 10. It's not bad, but it's not great. Alright, coming in at number 2. Now look, I do have a lot of issues with this show, but it still delivered some of the things I really wanted to see. So do we have number 2 as the Ahsoka show. Reason why. Hayden Christensen, being Hayden Christensen, actually being respected him like he was in the Obi-Wan show. Teaching Ahsoka lessons, great acting, can't wait to meet this boy in November, like, dude's amazing. The the silhouette of like the, the Clone Wars flashbacks brought in, I thought that was brilliant. I thought they handled that so amazing. Um Baylon Skull is one of the single-handedly greatest Star Wars characters ever, and I can't wait to see how they do with the recast with his story in season two. Um, Ezra Bridger, unfortunately, they ruined Ezra Bridger, man. I, I really wish he would have been better, but they made him, um, they made him Aladdin in Star Wars, and then they made him, like, the idea of him using force, like, force like Terrace Costi, how it's supposed to be, like, how Maul fights, that if I was writing this fucking show, bro, this dude would be doing fucking crazy-ass shit. This guy would be Dragon Ball-level force moves. This dude is, like... Oh, I can do this thing. I can stop lightsabers with the Force. It wasn't even that much martial arts. That's the point. And I liked Sabine in Rebels, but they fucking ruined Sabine in this show. She is one of the worst characters ever now. Like, she is just horrible. I have no disrespect for the actress. I will not attack the ha actress. I, I know she was just doing what she was paid to do. But the writing for her is terrible. They ruined Thrawn. They need to reboot Thrawn for Heir to the Empire. They made Thrawn dumb, and I hate that. Because Thrawn's supposed to be like the Sherlock Holmes of the Star Wars universe. He's supposed to have it all planned out. Like, he's supposed to know, oh, I know what you're planning, Ahsoka. Um, also, I did not like that they changed how... I love Rosario Dawson, but I don't like how they changed how Ahsoka is meant to act. I don't like her little mopey, doom and gloom. She's supposed to be cheerful and happy and, and hopeful. I love that David Tennant got to voice the robot that trains the Jedi. That was cool. Um, he's at Balon... Some of the lightsaber fights, very spotty, could have been way better. You should have just hired Nick Dillard, fixed it. But like I said, it's as good as it's going to get. It's not an amazing show, but it's better. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. It has enough good things to save it. Oh, also, one more thing. Fucking Bruce Lee's granddaughter playing Morgan Elizabeth as a night sister and kicking the shit out of Ahsoka with a blade that can cut through lightsabers and doing Jean Kudo, Bruce Lee's fighting style. Applaud. Fucking amazing. Thank you. 
The zombie Star Wars, the, the, the Star Wars zombies was a little bit goofy. I wish we could have done them a little cooler. But overall, I liked Ahsoka. I'm hopeful season two will be good. Um, let's head over to number one. Now this is off. Now look, season three with Jack Black and Lizzo was weird as fuck. Was not good. Not a single thing in that show was enjoyable, or in that season. But season one, after the sequel trilogy, no one wanted to see anything from Star Wars. Season one of The Mandalorian was like the John Wick of the universe coming in, feel like a Western vibe. You know, Lone Wolf and Cub, the whole influence they went for was brilliant. You just had a Mandalorian getting in here, t taking bounties, bounty cucks, fucking bitches up, like just going crazy, bam, 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 sh shooting them up. Viral blade, hand to hand combat, great characters, the I have spoken line. Season one is iconic. Season two, some of us say it's a cameo fest. But what they do with season two is so special. Bring in Boba Fett. Introducing characters like Cobb Van. Great storytelling. And even bringing in Luke Skywalker the way that they did was brilliant. I love season two. Plus, Moff Gideon is one of the best characters in this show. Gene Carl Esposito, can't wait to see you in the MCU, bro. You killed his Moff Gideon. I wish they wouldn't have screwed you over in, in, in season three. Hopefully you'll return as, as you always do. So anyway, guys, let me know you guys thought about my ranking for all Star Wars shows. I'm giving Mando easily a 10 out of 10. Uh, uh, well, 9.5 out of 10, because I gotta take some points off for season three. But honestly, look, if you enjoyed my video, make sure you hit the like, share, and subscribe, and may the force be with you. Also, one last thing to say. You have something I want. You do not know what you possess. It will be mine. That will be your subscribes, your, 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 your super chats, your everything, right? So like, it's, if you want to support the channel, be greatly appreciated. I'm really trying to build a Star Wars community of joyful people that want to, that want, that as a safe space where we can talk about the things that's wrong in Star Wars, the state of Star Wars, but also talk about the good memories of Star Wars. Maybe we'll do watch parties for the old movies, a bunch of fun stuff like that. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments. If you like my ranking, do you not? Please let me know. And if you want to see any other video, any other Star Wars videos, Please drop them in the comments below. I love hearing from you guys, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. So thanks for watching. Have a great day.